Welcome back to Analytical Chefs. Today we honor the late and great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He grew up in a religious family and excelled academically. His speeches will forever highlight the positivity of his character and influence. To think he was just born months before the Great Depression is unbelievable. This proves that your circumstances do not dictate your progression and future impact. Dr. King's family received the most prized possession from God during one of the most difficult times in U.S. history. Dr. King earned his bachelor's degree in sociology from Morehouse College and later obtained a Ph.D. in systematic theology from Boston University. Dr. King became a prominent figure in the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s. He advocated for racial equality and civil rights through nonviolent protest and civil disobedience. Dr. King played a central role in the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955, which led to the desegregation of public transportation in Montgomery, Alabama. Dr. King delivered his most famous speech, I Have a Dream, during the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom in 1963. It is important to mention that during Dr. King's speech, video recording shows that both black and white supporters were present. His activism contributed to the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and Voting Rights Act of 1965. Dr. King is celebrated for his commitment to nonviolence, equality, and justice. His legacy continues to inspire movements for civil rights and social justice worldwide. James Earl Ray assassinated Dr. King on April 4, 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. Dr. King was assassinated by a single shot from a Remington rifle. This horrific act sent shockwaves throughout the nation and the world. The official narrative suggests that Ray, who was primarily a small-time thief at the time, began stalking Dr. King across various cities before finally assassinating him in Memphis. However, there are numerous conspiracy theories and speculations surrounding the assassination. Some believe that Ray was merely a sucker that took the fall for the crime, which was set up by a bigger conspiracy against Dr. King. Sometime after, Reverend Ronald D. Wilson stated that his father, Henry Clay Wilson, admitted to murdering Dr. King while on his deathbed. However, those statements could not be corroborated. Wilson could not provide any proof to support this claim. In 1974, Ray attempted to recant his confession for the murder, arguing that he was not adequately represented by his previous attorney, Piercy Foreman. This move added more fuel to the fire of the conspiracy theories, with many suggesting that Ray might have just been coerced or manipulated into confessing to a crime that he did not commit. Dr. King's son, Dexter, confronted and interviewed Ray in 1997, while Ray served his 99-year prison sentence. Dexter asked, Did you kill my father? No, no, I didn't, no. I believe you, and my family believes you, and we are going to do everything in our power to try and make sure that justice will prevail. Ray at the time was battling liver disease and was stated to be terminally ill. While the exact motivations of Ray's actions remain debatable and uncertain, what is undeniable is the profound impact Dr. King's assassination had on the nation. It marked a turning point in the civil rights movement and left a void that has never been filled. Ray's assassination of Dr. King remains one of the most significant and controversial events in American history. During Martin Luther King weekend, some individuals, particularly in South Florida, engage in motorcycle related activities on the streets including popping wheelies this activity is not directly related to dr king's legacy or celebrations but has been associated with a tradition known as wheels up guns down where groups of motorcyclists and atv riders take the streets during mlk weekend the event's primary purpose is often to raise awareness of community issues and promote unity amongst participants the key to all forms of expression is ensuring that it stays constructive and not destructive. This is why it is so important that a leader invoking thought and action among society does so with the best intentions. If we all truly want to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy, we must do so with integrity 
strong ethics, and responsibility. Dr. King did not condone violence, so anyone who thinks violence is the answer, it isn't. It is impossible to use violence and turn a long-lasting change. Violence should only be a response in self-defense, only the answer if your life or the life of a loved one is in an imminent threat. The positive message of unity must be redistributed similar to running a relay race. If a strong positive message is manifested, then we should pass it along, like a baton. In Remember the Titans, Denzel Washington portrays coach Herman Boone, who struggles with racial tension as he coaches the 1971 Titans. The movie highlights how racial integration began in Alexandria, Virginia. Although the different race and backgrounds of high school football players began at odds, the story shows how misunderstandings can create wedges amongst people. The wise are those people that can see past what society may have planted in their minds on how they should act. In this film, differences are set aside and prejudice barriers are brought down. Once players of different races realized that what they initially thought of one another was completely false, some became great friends. This film, which is based on a true story, is just another example of how good people can influence great change. Comment below on which character in the film you feel has the highest emotional intelligence and why. I'll give my opinion later in the comment section. Unfortunately, criminal activity has existed and will always exist. There will always be good people, there will be evil, and there will be those that just make bad decisions. It is important to remember that our flesh will not live on earth forever. The only thing that will live forever are our ideas, thoughts, and our actions, which may impact future generations and their daily life choices. I hope that everyone wakes up with a strong determination to do good and to be constructive. Hate cannot be forced away, however, it can be confronted. An example of this is Ilia Calderon, a Colombian and Emmy award-winning journalist from Univision who chose to confront white supremacist Christopher and Amanda Barker. Let's listen to how Elia endured insults and threats while documenting this story. Why don't you go back? If you love your country, why are you coming over here chasing dogs? If you I go so back proud, all the time. You know, I hear all y'all people say, scream, we do the jobs nobody wants to do. We have nothing here in America. Y'all keep flooding it. But like God said, Yahweh himself says, we will chase you out of here. Are yeah. you going to chase me out of here? No, we're going to burn you out. Are like you going to burn me out? How are you going to do it? How are you going to do with 11 million immigrants? Don't matter. Hey, we Why killed you six million me? Jews the last time. How are you? You're, you're, you're telling nothing. me that you're going to burn me. <laughs> yeah. No. You're That's sitting on right. my property now. Yes, it is your property. Yeah. And I do understand that I'm probably the first black person immigrant here in your property. Well, first off, you said you keep it. Or whatever. To me, you're a nigger. That's it. Watch your mouth. That's it. <laughs> I find no, that I I find that offensive, and I, I don't think don't you need to go that because my skin color doesn't define me. You're what you are. Are you racist? No. I think everybody deserves the right to live. I mean, I got the best kids in the world. They don't smoke. They're not on drugs. They they don't go and steal, rob people. But they are growing up with these beliefs. No, we let them sit for themselves. I actually, let them. They had black friends. They have black friends. They did. When they were little, when they, when were they little, went to school, the like their neighbor was black. We let our kids grow up in regular schools With to blacks see and for themselves what what they see. We talk what we're talking about. They see it for themselves. So my kids, they only hang out with white people. And truthfully, my kids' friends don't even know my kids are in the clan. Yeah. But they click and they all believe the same thing. Mm -hmm. So why is that? If that. I mean, because they were taught and brought up right. Ironically, with all the hate and darkness spewing from Christopher Barker's core, his heart has to be black. Ilia Calderon has indicated that she dealt with racism even growing up in her home country of Colombia. Another amazing story on the fight to change hateful hearts is Daryl Davis. Davis attended countless KKK rallies. His positive influence has changed the hearts of over 200 KKK members many of which handed Davis their robes and hoods when they gave up the KKK. This is a perfect example of how the right approach can result in a victory and fight against hateful ideologies. Enemies are talking, they're not fighting, they're talking. It's when the talking ceases 
that the ground becomes fertile for violence. My friend. I consider Daryl to be my friend as well. I am Cuban-American, and my family immigrated from Cuba, fleeing from the communism endured at the hands of a Cuban dictatorship. Freedom of the press is not yours. And I say this very honestly. I have nothing to hide. If you ask us if a paper could appear here against socialism, I could say honestly, no, it cannot appear. We do not have the freedom of the press that you possess in the U.S. As many may have experienced for themselves, even amongst our own people in our foreign countries. Prejudice of any kind is not only morally wrong, it is just heartbreaking. If you have enjoyed this video and the positive message, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you may be notified when future content is published. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next video.